Welcome to this tutorial for Dashboard Builder Web Edition. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to install Dashboard Builder Web, how to set up a web dashboard, and finally upload it to the internet. To begin with, extract the downloaded file from the OpenGate support site. In the normal file folder, you'll notice a Dashboard Builder Access Web file, as well as a folder dbhtml. This subfolder is important and should be wherever you have your Dashboard Builder database, whether it's installed with your own database or it's used as a standalone. Once you've opened Dashboard Builder, you're presented with options to add Dashboard Builder to an existing database, to an existing UI Builder database, or run it in a standalone mode. We'll go ahead and run it in a standalone mode. And you can see we already have one sample web dashboard. Let's go ahead and create a new one. The first thing you'll notice is the dashboard name is up at the top. You can change that at any time. The local folder is the folder either on your PC or on a shared network drive where you're going to store the dashboard web files. In this case, we'll go ahead and just store them in this DB demo folder. The FTP profile is something that you don't have to set up unless you plan on having Dashboard Builder upload your files to the internet for you. I'll show you more about that in just a moment. The layout type comes in two versions, the left-hand side menu or a left-hand side menu but with the option to show graphs side by side in a comparison form. If you use the left-hand menu, a graph width of about 600 pixels is recommended for the compare format, it's recommended you use about 300 to 450 pixels width. The logo optionally it can be from your computer or you can enter in a URL if you have it on the internet already. In this next part we have the displayed graphs. We can search for a graph that we already have defined or you can just simply choose them from the drop down as well. Now you'll notice here you can change the caption. We may want to be monthly revenue byproduct rather than what the graph name is. In the display what you can choose to show a graph only or a graph and a data table right below the graph. You can reorder these as desired and once you've made your selections you can also choose to include any metric dashboards that you have in your database. So we'll say as an example we want the executive dashboard and our employees dashboard. Now once we've done that we can open this locally on our own hard drive. When you click open it'll ask if you want to update your files to include the latest data from your database. It's important to note that it's not a live connection to your database so it's updating the data, creating HTML files and charts and then placing those in that folder. Now you can see your dashboard, it's got the logo on the top left, the name of the dashboard here, and you can toggle between each of these web charts and the metric dashboards. You'll see the last time the data was updated and here you'll see that the local folder was on the desktop and then the name of the dashboard is basically the name of the file itself. Next I'll show you how to upload this to the internet. You would click on the FTP profile name here and you would enter in all the details necessary. To explain you have the profile name which is something that you should enter that you'll remember. The host is the FTP server or web server where you're going to upload the files. This will be your FTP username <coughs> and FTP password. It's obscured here in the form but note that it isn't encrypted in the database where it's stored. The directory is optionally if you want to create a subdirectory on the FTP host for this FTP account. So in this case we'll do DB demo test. And you'll notice when we upload the files that this username actually uploads to a subfolder, not to the root uh, website. Finally, you've got debug mode. If you need to see why your files may not be getting uploaded, you can check this box and it will leave the FTP window open and freeze your application until you close it. So this is a good way to troubleshoot and find out why your, F your files may not be uploading. Save those changes and we'll choose that. And now you'll notice we have open locally or upload now. So we can still open it 
in the local directory or I'm going to click upload and it's now uploading to the website and since it's in debug mode access is frozen until we close this window and you can see that it's uploading all of the appropriate files for the dashboard once I click any key we resume back to access so typically you don't want to keep it in debug mode so now let's go look at it on the site so now we're looking at it live on the OpenGate software website the FTP user account brought us to this directory right here we created this subdirectory we told dashboard builder to create it and again the file name for your dashboard is just simply the name of the dashboard and then .htm so you can see here we're live on the internet and bringing up the same web charts and graphs so anyone that has access to this URL on your site could in fact see this dashboard you can very easily secure down this directory um, you may need to talk to your web master if uh, you're not familiar with that or if you are familiar you can update an HT access file on the directory to uh, require a specific username and password for somebody to actually access um, these files now let's look at how this is structured I mentioned before that the DB HTML folder here is very important for dashboard builder web to function it has a master style CSS file and in this file you have all of the uh, uh, coding for how the dashboards should look in terms of the layout so the link fonts and sizes um, as well as the table layouts so we recommend you only change this if you're familiar with CSS the Google graph template is actually the key file that drives how the graphs are rendered we use the Google API a free open source API to be able to render the data no data is passed to Google it's all done in the browser but this template here has several key tags enclosed by square brackets and prefaced with OGS so anywhere you see that that's a tag that dashboard builder will replace with actual data when it uses the template to render the chart Similarly, you have the template for the left-hand side menu and the compare side-by-side -side compare menu. Now, if you recall, we decided that we were going to use this directory, the DB demo directory, as our local directory. So you'll see here the company performance dashboard is stored locally here. So if I double-click it, it just opens that up. The logo that we included is brought in and automatically copied into this directory and then two additional directories are created the graphs directory stores the actual graph files so they're displayed in iframes and so this is the actual chart file that was used inside the dashboard so this area here is actually an iframe and then you have the resources directory which is just where we take a copy of the CSS file to upload uh, to the uh, internet so this is the file it's copied from the master uh, CSS file so if you need to make changes to the CSS file make them in this dbhtml directory and then they're propagated each time you generate a new web dashboard last a couple advanced notes if you double click on a graph or a dashboard it will bring up the definition for that graph so that you can change it the auto publish there's a function in dashboard builder web called f publish all dashboards if you check this for any one of the dashboards it will include that when you run that function the f publish all dashboards basically tries to uh, update your dashboard files on the local folder and upload them if there's an FTP profile defined so it will run through that on an automatic basis you can either schedule that by creating your own scheduler or you could use a product like workflow builder to do so uh, where you schedule the workflow to execute that procedure on a scheduled basis thanks for watching hope you enjoy using dashboard builder web edition